Well, we're at that point. We are so creatively bankrupt in Hollywood that we are remaking Space Jam, a film spun off from commercials, if I understand the history correctly. So I was six or seven when the first Space Jam came out. I don't remember it coming out. Um, I didn't follow basketball, so I wasn't a huge Michael Jordan fan any more than, you know, anyone is. But I have rewatched it within the past couple of years. I know it doesn't look like it based on my appearance, but I actually do some coaching and I go to a lot of high school basketball games. So every year before the start of the season, I try to hype myself up by watching movies that are vaguely related to sports. And a few years ago, I rewatched Space, Ga Space Jam, not Space Jam. Um, but I must not have paid all that much attention. You know what? It wasn't that. It was that since then, I've watched the Michael Jordan uh, documentary series, The Last Dance. And so watching through Space Jam now, there are things that I caught this time that I had never noticed before. Uh, mainly Michael Jordan's gambling hobby, as he calls it, or addiction, as other people have called it. But uh, I took a few more notes on this. Not a whole lot to say about it, but my notes are over there. So give me one second. And we're back. Now, before I get to my notes, I it's hard to be objective about things that you saw when you were a kid. But I feel like the original Space Jam worked at the time because at the time, Looney Tunes were popular and Michael Jordan was popular. And watching through the film, there aren't that many pop culture references in the Looney Tunes world. There are, there are a few, but they're all done together. It's, you know, after the, after halftime of the big game, right towards the end of the film. But for the most part, the Looney Tune jokes and gags and gimmicks and shtick is just Looney Tune stuff. So if you laugh at normal Looney Tunes, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh at this stuff. Now, I have not seen a full trailer for the new Space Jam. I've just seen bits and pieces of it, and I've heard talk, people talking about it, but it's, it seems like, based on the little that I've seen, that they're trying to make Looney Tunes cool and they're trying to make Looney Tunes relevant by putting in these pop culture references. Now, maybe I'm totally wrong on that. Maybe I've just seen the wrong things and heard, you know, heard people that focus it and dial in on these little things. Um, certainly, in the bit that I've seen, they don't look like, you know, It's an old man thing to say, but like, you know, they don't look like the Looney Tunes that I remember. But then even when I was rewatching the original film, I was like, these aren't really the classic cartoon animation that I remember. So it makes sense. Animation evolves over time. If there are any kids now that watch Looney Tunes, I assume this is what they look like on TV. I don't watch Looney Tunes currently, so I don't know. So I'm not upset about it. It's just like, oh... That's what they look like now. That's weird. That's different. Uh, but it's just because I'm getting old. <laughs> so I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but I just hope that they let the Looney Tunes be Looney Tunes. And not try too hard to make them other things. Um, I don't know anything about LeBron James, I want to say, is who's doing the movie. Uh, <laughs> I might even be wrong about that. Um, but, you know, Michael Jordan had to do a lot of what I would consider stupid stuff for this movie. So hopefully LeBron James is game to do those things because you have to do those things if you're going to be in a movie with Looney Tunes, right? So I'm not excited for it. I'm not looking forward to it. But I'm also probably not the demographic. I don't know. Is this aimed at kids? Or is this aimed at people that were kids when the first one came out? That's the hard thing with these remakes or reboots of stuff from the 90s. It's hard to tell who they're for. Anyway, let me get to my notes. 
Some stuff in this movie was really, really funny. And still made me laugh out loud. And one of those things is when uh, Wayne Knight's character, Stan Podolak, is trying to prove his worth. He takes the ball from Michael and he's trying to dribble and he says, I might not be very tall, but I'm slow. <laughs> and just the delivery was perfect. It was excellent. And I see myself in that character. I, I, I literally, I laughed out loud. Um, there was another, there was another moment I thought that made me laugh out loud, but apparently I didn't write it down. Probably just a stupid visual joke. Um, the subtitles in this movie. So I watched most movies with subtitles. I'm one of those people. And I don't know what the process is between the screenplay or the script and the subtitles. I don't know if the subtitles are taken from the script. I don't know if they're done after the fact. And like uh, several movies have a subtitle or two that's wrong. But man, almost at more lines were wrong in this than lines that were correct. I didn't count, but I'm pretty confident saying that. And if it's not, then it's close. And a lot of it is like, anytime a character's like, oh, we gotta do this, or we gotta go get this, or he's gotta do that. And the script always says, must. I must do this. We must win this game. You must go get my shorts. And I'm just like, Who's writing this, right? Like, clearly people don't talk like that, and they don't say it in the movie. I'm like, why is that in the subtitles? But there's just... If you're a subtitle watcher, this movie will throw you off. Because there's so many of them that are wrong. That's not a dig at the movie, right? Because subtitles are a separate thing. It was just distracting, which I guess a lot of people think any subtitles are distracting. So maybe most people wouldn't care. Um, I never noticed before, or at least I don't remember noticing before, they make a, they make a dig at the Mighty Ducks in this movie, which I would have thought I would have caught on my last watching, but I don't remember it, but they're talking about what to name the team, and Daffy Duck suggests the Ducks, fantastic, and Bugs Bunny says something along the lines of what kind of Mickey Mouse organization would name their team the Ducks? Docs obviously owned by the Disney company. Um, so I'd say that some shots fired, and I have no qualms about saying that the Mighty Ducks movies are far better than Space Jam. So stick that carrot in your mouth, Bugs Bunny. My goodness. I uh, already talked about uh, Michael's Gambling. This is just a little thing. Lots of other people have talked about this, but if you've never noticed, Martian Manhunter is the referee in this movie. Because he's both a Looney Tune and an alien. That's the smartest thing in this whole movie. And they don't even address it in the movie. But if you've never noticed that, there you go. Smart move there. Um, Bill Murray. I think maybe that's the other joke. It didn't make me literally laugh out loud. But it's just one of those clever, like, stop taking yourself so seriously. When they're like, how did you get here? And he's like, oh, the producer's a friend of mine. And they just roll with it. And... That's why you can't really pick this movie apart too much, because it knows what it is, and it's not taking itself seriously, so why should we take it seriously? I guess that's a concern that I have for the new one, is that it might take itself too seriously. I don't have any reason to believe that, other than that seems to happen a lot with remakes and reboots, is that they try to take themselves too seriously and it doesn't go well. So hopefully they have fun with it. Um, I had two lines that I wrote down that were classic lines in my house growing up with me and my siblings. I don't remember Space Jam as something that we repeatedly watched over and over and over and over and over. We did that with Willy Wonka. We did that with the It miniseries. We watched the Mighty Ducks a lot. We, you know, we had our fair share of movies that we did that with. I don't remember Space Jam being one of those. But there's two lines in here that we probably said on a daily basis. And the first one is when the little aliens are first going into Toon World. The big leader one, he says, hang on! And then one of them says, hanging on! And then a the little one says, hanging on! And we said that all the time. <laughs> Probably in situations that didn't warrant it. 
And I feel like that never left my head and I just kind of forgot where it came from. And I don't say it as much as an adult because I know that it, it's a my family thing and that most people aren't going to know what I'm referencing. And I don't even know if I remembered what I was referencing, but it's just that just like, boom, took me right back all the time. If someone said, hang on, someone else would say, hanging on, hanging on. Classic, classic line. And then the other one, which I don't know if it's from this or if it was in something else and then this was referencing that, but I think my siblings and I got it from this. But there's a point uh, in the final game where Daffy gets just crushed by the Monstars. And he has, you know, the classic Looney Tune. Oh, I don't understand what's going on anymore. And he's got the line. I'm not going to try to do it like him. But he says the line, But Mommy, I don't want to go to school today. I want to stay home and make cookies with you. And he's got his whole thing going on with the way that he talks. And we did that so much. We did that so much when I was a kid. And I didn't remember that it was from this. So... Nostalgia, right? That's what happens. You watch something from when you were a kid, and boom, it hits you like a wall of bricks. Last thing that I wrote down um, is interesting watching this film after the coronavirus pandemic, because in this film there are five, five NBA players that lose their talent and can't play the game anymore, and all the other players are concerned that it's going to happen to them, they're refusing to play. They're worried about germs. And I don't I don't know who it would be. I don't know how these organizations work. Is it the commissioner of the NBA? The owner of the you know, I don't know I don't know who's at the top, but somebody in the movie makes a statement that they're not gonna play any more games anymore until they figure out what's going on. And I'm just like, wow! Imagine that! Imagine if five people getting sick was enough to shut down without any real questions. Yet in the real world, hundreds of thousands of people got sick and people still wanted to play. <clears throat> Not gonna say too much more on that, just, you know, how quaint to think that five people not being able to play would have such a big impact. So those are my thoughts on the original Space Jam. Don't really know what to expect from the first one. I'm going in with pretty low expectations, so hopefully I can just enjoy it. I'm hoping that it's just going to be a dumb kids movie like the original one, because if they try to take it too seriously, I do not think that can work. Oh, I was going to say, I think there's an idea for a movie uh, in here, because um, there's the whole bit where... Bugs Bunny gives everybody Michael's secret stuff. And they find out later that it's just water. And it's like, oh, you had it in you all along. Blah, 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 blah. I think there's a movie in here that could have been made where everyone is concerned because the Monstars have taken the talent. But one of the first things Michael does when he gets to the Toon Squad's basketball court is to run drills. And I'm like, maybe it's not as flashy, maybe it's not as fun. But I think there's a movie there where the lesson is understanding the game and knowing the rules and knowing the plays is more important than just being able to shoot the ball well. So maybe someday someone will make a movie about that. Maybe it's already out there and it's just not very famous because maybe that doesn't make a very good movie. But that was a thought that popped in my head that was like, that could, you know, that would be a, a useful movie for children that want to play basketball. Is you know, understanding that learning the game is more important than being good at taking shots. But uh, that's just the that's just the boring adult in me, I guess, is that I want to see a game about the fundamentals being highlighted as how important they are. So that's where I'm going to end this. Nothing much more to say. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.